Right. So, uh, uh, yeah, of course, uh, this is John. And so I have come up with a new type of single wire transmission. Uh, so I wanted to go ahead and, uh, you know, show off uh, or, you know, show show what it is. <laughs> I'm actually kind of excited about this because I think this is probably a first in Minecraft, right? So if you've seen my last video, you saw that I made these bitstream decoders that can take a serial input and output that to parallel to these D flip flops. Uh, so I was doing some testing uh, on the latching system, right? Uh, and so I kind of realized that you can actually, uh, with a little, with a few modifications to a little four, four bit circuit here, you can actually make a binary addressing system uh, that is in line with the uh, bitstream decoder, right? Uh, and so what that allows you to do is address according to binary. So all of all of these addresses, so I have four different uh, nodes here. Uh, so all of these addresses are going to be a binary number. Uh, and then behind that, you can send eight bits of data. Uh, so this is the the eight bit output is the largest that I have been able to come up come up with uh, so far. Um, so and as well as with the four bit address, that's the largest thing I came up with so far. But I just wanted to go ahead and make a video about it in case anybody uh, was interested and wanted to know how these things operate. Uh, and you know what all this stuff is. So anyway, just like the previous video, so we have a little control panel here. Uh, so we have our, because it's four bit binary, we're gonna have 15 different registers, just like the previous system. Uh, but this system is actually based on repeaters. So um, the way that this works, of course, this could be a, sim a simple repeater you know, dust line with repeaters to carry the signal, right? But because I'm considering these to be nodes that can perform functions uh, as well as send data back to you, which I didn't include any of that stuff in this one. Um, I didn't really go over the top on this one, uh, but uh, I am using these uh, little two-way, um, I guess you could call it a two-way repeater. But I first saw this with uh, in a video um, made by a writerish uh, which is a youtuber uh, and she was making a computer and she said she had a need for two-way repeaters and so she came up with that so I was very grateful that she did because I was like oh you know if I can make a redstone dust line then I can use two-way repeaters and then I you know had to go back and watch her video to figure out how to make them uh, but anyway uh, so each node here we can control with our our uh, little uh, selector panel. So we can select one address uh, and you can only select one at a time. And that's gonna show you the binary code for the address. So that is one. Uh, and if we pick whatever that number is, then that's gonna be 10, eight and two, or no, eight and two, uh, eight and one. So that's gonna be nine, right? That can be eight. Yeah. Okay. So that's eight. Uh, and so the way that I'm I'm doing this, I, I just have um, a redstone dust line going to an analog signal strength, uh, and I am using uh, Enoki Love's uh, you know signal strength to binary decoder here. So the more compact version. Uh, but anyway, so. Outside of that, everything else is practically the same. Uh, so you have the observer line uh, with the pistons acting as your uh, selectors. Uh, so anyway, we can go ahead and uh, transmit a signal here and I'll just show you how it operates, right? So let's pick the green one since it's right there. And this is going to be the fastest type of transmission uh, because whenever we input a signal it does not stop okay uh, so when the four bit when the first four four bits go through uh, nothing gets held up nothing gets stopped 
So the first four bits come through here. Uh, and as soon as our uh, signal, you know, our 8-bit signal, well, technically 9-bit because you have to have a latch. Excuse me. But as soon as that signal hits this comparator, that comparator is unlocked. So then it will go straight through. Uh, so this is, you know, pretty much as fast as you can get because we're just using a redstone dust line. So uh, let's say if I wanted to uh, send a signal to the blue line down there. And I have something special going on with two of the nodes here. Um, so we can just send a signal down to the blue line there. And you can watch how fast it takes to travel and uh, lock the signal in. Okay, so it is very fast. Oops. Uh, and uh, so what else I have going on? So just like I said before that these are nodes that can perform functions. So of course I didn't set, set up any functions except uh, on this one. Uh, so this has a special function and I tried to make a little thing here. So I'll, I'll explain what this is. Uh, but the way that this works is that Okay, so first you see with the blue one back there. Okay, so we see that something here is sending a signal, right? So if I want to, let's just retransmit that number back to the blue line. Okay. So what's happening here is I have the orange one set up uh, to automatically send a signal. Uh, so whatever data I put into the orange one, it's automatically going to relay that one to the blue. I'll relay that to the blue line back there, ah, blue line. Uh, so if we update the orange, okay, so we just sent it a single bit there. Uh, and then whenever that goes to refresh, that should uh, send that signal back to the blue line or back to the blue node. <clears throat> Uh, but this is kind of experimental. So what I was trying to do here was to uh, make some type of anti-collision protection. So just like with a network, uh, you're going to, in fact, this is just like a network. Uh, so you have a four bit address, uh, you know, so the data is going to come in. If it matches the address, it's going to pass through. If it doesn't match, it's going to stop. Uh, and so what I was trying to do here, so I have a hopper clock to give us a periodic signal, uh, but you see that this little delay circuit here is going to light up every time that there is power on the line. Uh, and so the reason that I made that is so that, you know, uh, regardless of what the hopper clock is doing, so if we have a signal on the line, then it's going to wait a certain amount of time before this orange node will try to uh, resend the signal. Uh, and speaking of, because these are repeater lines, um, you know, you can input a signal of 15. Now, normally, the signal of just being constantly on would, if we had a 15th node, right? So if we had a 15th node and we had uh, every, every bit turned on to try to send to the 15th node, so that would be the exact same signal as, you know, holding uh, power on the line for a certain amount of time, okay? But because we don't, uh, this system is very impervious to, uh, you know, redstone. So like I said, if it doesn't match that four bit address uh, in time, you know, like exactly in time, then the signal is not going to go through. So you could do something like this, like put uh, you know, a signal here. In fact, I had a T flip flop over here that I was playing with because, uh, you know, if you put a signal on the line, then that could activate the T flip flop, but, you know, the T flip flop would never turn on and off with the signals, you know? So it's kind of funny, but, uh, so anyway, uh, I'm going to go ahead and give a little tutorial about how to make this and, um, uh, you know, because I think, uh, if anybody would like to play around with it, I'm going to include a world download. But it's going to be a lot of information, so I figure I'll just make make one and then show you how they work. Okay, so we need to make a new node. Uh, so let's pick... Uh, I don't want brown. Yeah, so let's pick the light blue. 
Okay, so uh, your signal line. So the way that you determine how long your signal needs to go, uh, you just the way that you make these uh, these you know two directional repeaters or bidirectional repeater. Just go ahead and lay down your line and okay yeah so I should have gone here uh, in fact you know what let's go ahead and turn this because I don't want it to go here I want it to be closer all right so lay your dust out wherever it stops wherever you have a dead signal uh, put a comparator then a repeater and then on either side of the comparator and the repeater uh, just put down a repeater next to that one with a comparator behind it and you want these in uh, subtract mode uh, and then that is it you just hook up some dust uh, and now you have a two-way repeater you just have to keep in mind that whenever you run your line out of it you have to be on the comparator side so just like that okay uh, and now you can take this off uh, so we're gonna go ahead and make a blue one uh, and I'll just let's add a couple more blocks here and I will just make that coming off to the side here uh, so repeater 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 so it's gonna be 4-bit so we're going to need uh, four blocks here each with a repeater and so let's go ahead and determine what address we want it to be uh, so did I really have all these turned on jeez all right so say that I want it to be uh, you know that address so I'm gonna see what the binary code is for that because I don't care to count you know I don't want to count and then have to figure out what the binary is so we're going to say it's uh, our, our address is going to be on, off, on, off, right? So if we want to see uh, on, off, on, off, then that's going to be on, then off, then on, then off, okay? So where you have an on, you want to put down a comparator. And where you have an off, you want to uh, put a block and dust below, okay? So we're going to put dust there. Now in front of that dust, put a block with a torch. All right, so on top of these torches and in front of the comparators, you can put some blocks. Uh, and then in front of every comparator and on top of every torch, put another torch. All right, so I'm going to uh, get into finishing up the latching system on the top. So. Uh, where your your last repeater is where your last block is put a comparator there uh, and this, this is going to be the start of the latching circuit so you want a uh, repeater and dust dust uh, and then you're going to put a comparator and a comparator dust dust and we're going to need another block here and a repeater and dust now if you um, now that should be fine Okay, uh, so uh, so come up on top of this comparator with a block. So block in the front, block there. Uh, and we're gonna put a block there and then just run a line back here. All right, and then you can put dust coming down the blocks like that. Okay, uh, we can't have dust there, which you'll see in a second. Uh, so now wherever you have comparators down on the bottom, put dust uh, next to that and then you want a torch above it to kill the comparator <clears throat> all right so coming out the front we're going to have a comparator here uh, in subtract mode with a block and dust next to that so next to finish up the uh, address section so i just end up putting some blocks next to those uh, and then what we're going to do is run dust on the top and then down like that and the reason why is because we want to put a torch there so this is going to be one giant AND gate 
Uh, and that's how we're going to determine the address here is because that torch uh, will stay off if we're at the proper timing. Uh, that torch will stay off if we're at the proper timing. That torch will turn off and that torch will turn off if we're at the proper timing. So if we're at our proper address, uh, everything should turn off and then we should get a, a one tick pulse out of this torch. Uh, and I haven't, what I should have done though, before I made a video about it was tested it with, uh, with every address because I haven't gone through and tested everything yet. But I mean, with everything that I've done so far, I haven't had any issues. So, uh, so we'll see, we'll see how this one does. And then, yeah, if this one breaks, then we'll know we have a problem. <laughs> uh, but anyway. Yeah, I wouldn't be putting out a video if I had a problem. That would be embarrassing. All right, so for the output section, the 8-bit output section, uh, we're going to be putting down uh, eight repeaters with eight blocks between. Okay, so lay out some blocks to do the latching section. And again, next to the last block, Put a comparator in subtract mode. Uh, you want it to dust next to it, and we're going to be putting a repeater there. And then our little uh, comparator fade out clock here with a two tick repeater after that, uh, and then dust. Okay, so this is going to have to come back and up. And we need to come back for our full eight bits. So just like that. All right, now I'm just gonna throw down some blocks. It's a lot easier when you make it on the ground because you don't have to add a lot of blocks. But anyway, so in front of every block here, we're going to be putting a comparator. So we're gonna have a total of eight comparators all in subtract mode. Uh, between each uh, pair of comparators, you want to put a piece of dust, and then we're going to be putting a torch, oops, not there, a torch at the top to power that dust. Okay, so for the rest of the latch, uh, we can run some dust, and I already know because it's 8 bit, uh, I already know that we're going to need uh, a repeater up here to continue the signal strength. Uh, so I'll just put that in, and of course, like in the last video, whenever you put a comparator in, make it between sets, uh, and then, or not a comparator, when you put a repeater up top, uh, and then where your repeater was at the bottom, pull that out and put a dust. Uh, but anyway, so go ahead and put some blocks in front of the comparators, and we're going to need dust on the center block, not there. and a torch in front of the dust. Not like that, there. All right, so coming out in front of the comparators, we need two tick repeaters. Uh, and then after this, we're going to be putting a one tick repeater in front of the repeater, or in front of the torch. Okay, and some blocks in front of those. All right, so in front of these two tick repeaters, we need to put a line of dust. And now we need blocks in the front again. So coming off in front of these center repeaters, uh, we need to put dust on those two blocks. And uh, in front of the two tick repeaters with the dust, put a comparator facing forward in subtract mode. So this is gonna be uh, the lower section of our uh, D flip flops. So on the top blocks, uh, again, comparators and subtract. And then over the dust, put blocks. And then we can just put a line of blocks in front of the comparators here. And in front of every comparator, we're gonna need a dust. Oh, 
not right there. And then of course blocks on top of the comparators. Alright, so I will go ahead and put some lamps on here so we can see what it is doing. Yeah, this is going to be, this seems like uh, a pretty easy type of system to make. Uh, and I think I would like to, let's, see, let's go ahead and tag that so I can know where that one is. I think I would like to see just how advanced I can make this uh, and see if there would be a better way to make uh, some type of anti-congestion or anti-collision. Um, what just happened here? Why is that not carrying across? Hmm, I think what I'm going to have to do with that, for whatever reason it, oops, for whatever reason it didn't want to send down the line, so it's probably the placement. Uh, you know what it is? It's because you have to be careful where you put repeaters on these, because if you put a signal strength of 15, then it's going to cut off that comparator. Yeah, and that's also the reason why you have to uh, when you're using these two-way repeaters, why you have to make sure you put the dust line coming into the back of the comparator, because you always have to have a higher signal strength uh, coming into the input than over here or on the side. So if I put a signal strength of 15 here, uh, then that would just cancel out in the comparator and we wouldn't get a signal you know, out this side. And likewise, like you just saw, uh, we weren't going to get a signal coming down this way because I was powering the side of the comparator, so that was cutting it off. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, so this is uh, the bit streaming or uh, networking system that I came up with uh, using redstone dust wire. Uh, and I think just like with the previous analog signal strength system, uh, I think this has a lot of potential. Uh, but I think this might even have more potential as far as the speed, uh, the speed that it can actually send the data, you know, because it's, it's pretty fast when it's actually, uh, you know, transmitting and receiving data. Um, so we'll see. I might see if, uh, if I can develop more nodes and see if I can have some more advanced functions and then, uh, you know, see if I can actually get them to do something and see if I can actually produce some decent collision protection and, uh, you know, have stuff go as fast as possible. But anyway, so that's it for the video. Again, I'm going to make a world download in case anybody wants to play around with this. So uh, I guess that is all, and thank you for watching.